Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the diagnosis of a TXV bulb, okay, that is low on refrigerant. All right, so we actually have the TXV bulb detached from the suction line, and it's inside a bucket of ice water, okay? This unit you see right here, you know, you have the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. They're just piped together. We are inside. This is a training unit, so it's acting like a huge dehumidifier, okay? So the inside of the room is 70 degrees. The what would be the outside of the room at 70 degrees, okay? And the TXV bulb, which is full of charge right now, but it's replicating a low charge. So a TXV by itself should have a refrigerant in the TXV bulb, okay? Uh, presently, that bulb is in the ice water, okay? So our pressure is down very, very low because the TXV is not allowing the refrigerant to flow into the evaporator coil. All right, it's only allowing a little tiny bit. A TXV cannot close down completely. It's just letting a little tiny bit in. All right, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the, so I'm going to go over three different scenarios with you just so you kind of know what's going on and maybe you can think about it a little bit and stuff like that. All right, so in this scenario, I'm going to give you the superheat and the subcooling. Okay, you normally check a system like this that has a TXV, you check it in subcooling, okay? Which will be the high side gauge and the temperature on the liquid line, all right? But just because you have the correct subcooling does not necessarily mean the whole system's operating correctly. What you wanna do is you wanna confirm your correct charge of 18, with 18 to 21 degree temp difference between the return and supply air, all right? So you really wanna, you also wanna hook up this gauge right here, okay? Because if you are down below 32 degrees on this, then that could mean that there's a problem of some sort, either with airflow uh, or the metering device restriction or a low refrigerant charge, okay? So one of those things could be occurring. So for your reference, this is for your reference, I'm going to check superheat and subcooling, okay? Superheat, remember that even though we don't use this as a charging process for our TXV system, it will give us some answers to what's actually happening in the system right now, okay? As well, you definitely need some type of su uh, superheat to be going back through your vapor line right here and into your compressor so that your vapor compressor is not compressing liquid refrigerant. All right, in the case of it being completely wide open, the TXV being wide open, then the compressor will be in danger of having liquid entering into uh, the compressor. But I'm gonna give you these scenarios, okay? So, presently, our temperature on the vapor line, okay, actually on the vapor line right here, 62 degrees, all right? Our saturated temperature right here, 19 degrees, okay? So you take this actual number minus, minus that number right there, so 62 degrees minus 19, you're talking about 43 degrees of superheat, all right, presently. It's going to be a high superheat because it's only allowing a little bit of refrigerant into the evaporator coil. All right, so it has plenty of time for this little tiny bit of refrigerant to superheat and come back. All right, even though this is in the freezing the freezing zone, your your vapor temperature is actually going to be quite high because it's only a little bit of refrigerant in there in the evaporator coil. All right, so that's that. All right, so we got the pressure as well as forty roughly forty one or forty two psij. Now we're going to go ahead and switch over to our liquid. All right. Yeah, our actual pressure on the liquid side looks to be about 181 PSIG, or maybe about 180 PSIG. All right, and then we got our saturated temperature in there of about 94 degrees. This is R22. This whole system's R22, and so we can use the green ring on the inside to determine what the saturated temperature is in the middle of the condenser coil right there. All right, so 94 degrees, R22 minus 72.5 degrees. So I said it's 94, 94 degrees minus 72.5, and you have 21.5 degrees of subcooling presently. All right, so that's what's happening. All right, it's a high subcooling because if there's a little bit of refrigerant here, then, then, there's, a, then there's a lot of refrigerant in the condenser coil. All right, now I'm going to give you the next state, which would be if the charge was was correct and the TXV bulb was correct and it was sensing the proper temperature on this line. 
All right, so we have the TXV bulb mounted on the suction line. All right, has stainless steel hose clamps. You can use copper, but if you use stainless steel hose clamps, make sure you do not over tighten them, you know, and, and crush the bulb in any way. All right, presently, uh, we have a correct charge and the TXV um, bulb has refrigerant in it and it's absorbing the temperature that's on the suction line. All right, so what we're going to take a look at is where our superheat is now and where our subcooling is at now, just to kind of show you what's going on. All right, so you see our vapor temperature is at 32 degrees. It's just barely above the freezing point in the middle of the evaporator coil. Everything is okay. It's just the temperature in the room's a little low. It's about, say, 68 degrees, 70 degrees in the inside of the room right now, okay? What would be outside is about 70 degrees. So just let's go 70 inside, 70 outside, all right? We're at 32 degrees as a saturated temperature, and we have 54 degrees actual on our suction line. So 54.5 minus 32, and we're looking at uh, 20, 22 to 23 degrees of superheat, which is almost half the superheat we had before. We were up in the 40s before, okay? Um, but now we should not have too crazy amount of superheat while the system's running. We should have somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe anywhere, say 14, 18, 20, somewhere around in that neighborhood, okay? Now, this system uh, has been running for a while, and we had that TXV bulb in the, in the ice already. So I think if we let this system run a little longer, it's only been like, say, five minutes. If we let it run a little bit longer, our... our actual temperature on the vapor line will be a little bit higher but presently it's about 22 to uh, 23 degrees of superheat all right our pressure is at 58 psi j now we're going to go ahead and check our liquid line and we're going to see if we have the correct charge now my thermostat was about to turn off on me there All right, so we have 99 degrees saturated on the liquid side. Subcoiling takes place in the liquid side. We have about 194 PSIG over here, and if you follow it in, it's about 99 degrees saturated temp in the middle of the condenser coil over here. All right, so you got 99 minus 80, say 81, okay, and we have uh, 18 degrees of subcooling. Okay, so within three degrees plus or three degrees minus, uh, the actual subcooling. This particular unit is calling for 15, so we have 18. It's a little overcharged. I think the system may need to balance this out out a little bit more, meaning it needs to put a little bit more refrigerant in the evaporator coil. You got to give it a little bit of time. Once again, it's only been five minutes since we had that TXV in the ice cubes. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it looks like when you have the TXV bulb in hot water. All right. All right. And so this in this scenario, we have the TXV bulb off of the suction line. It's placed into a cup of water that is about 100 degrees, 100 degrees. Okay. Completely submerged in the water. We're taking our temperature reading on the vapor line. All right. Our vapor pressure at this time. Okay. Should, it is actually about uh, 68 PSIG. If you follow that in, the saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator quilt is 40 degrees. Where it comes out at and it comes over to the compressor, it's only 44.6. So uh, this is about f almost 41, actually. Um, you're looking down at it, it's actually about 41 uh, degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the quilt, and this is 44.5. So that's about 3.5 degrees of superheat. So that compressor is just about in danger of having liquid going into the compressor. It's a vapor compressor. It can't have liquid go in. Now, the reason for that, why that's happening, is the bulb thinks that this line is very hot, so it's completely opened up. All right? The reason that is is because the bulb has refrigerant in it. It's pressurized due to the heat. Higher the temperature, the higher the pressure. 
and this tube is exerting pressure onto the head of the TXV. All right, so it's opening up the TXV almost fully in order to cool what it thinks is a higher temperature in the building or the higher temperature in the house, okay? So this is the way to test the TXV to see if it is functioning properly, to see it adjust, okay? Open up all the way or close down or open up by putting the TXV bulb in hot water or in cold water. Um, but hot water is recommended because um, just to see that it's dumping more refrigerant into there. It has, it'll have more cooling effect, but you do want to be careful not to put liquid into the compressor. Anyway, here we go. So we got 68 PSIG, 41 degrees, and 44.5 is your actual. You have 3.5 degrees of superheat. It's 70 degrees in the house, 70 degrees outside where this would be mounted at normally. Okay, now we're going to look at our subcooling. All right, in our high side. Okay. All right, presently we have 185 PSIG on the liquid side. Okay, and we have about 96 to 97 degrees. Okay, uh, saturated in the middle of this condenser coil. Okay, so let's just call it 97 degrees. Okay. So 97 degrees is the actual uh, is the um, <laughs> is the saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. The actual temperature on the liquid line, 91 degrees. So 97 minus 91, and you have six degrees of subcooling, because it was taking when this was a, at a this was the TXV bulb was mounted on the suction line. Everything was fine. The charge is full and everything is good. This had 15 degrees of subcooling. Actually, it had 18 degrees of subcooling. Now your TXV is actually opened up and it's using more refrigerant on this side. So therefore it means it's taking it from that side, okay? So um, if, this, if this actually was the case and you had an extremely hot building, okay, um, you know, you, your subcooling will be, will be on the lower side because it's using more, all right? So um, we only have six degrees of subcooling. All right, so that just kind of gives you uh, just an overview of what's happening in the system. The more that you can understand what's happening via your subcooling and your superheat, your pressures and temperature correlations on your on your gauges, which actually are pressure temperature charts, the more you can tell about what's happening in the system at any given moment in time. Okay, then it's just a process of elimination, uh, working backwards to see what's actually happening. All right. All right, so here is a TXV, okay? You have the bulb opening and closing pressure due to the refrigerant inside this bulb right here, all right? So when this is attached to the suction line after the refrigerant goes through the evaporator coil, whether that's inside the evaporator coil box or, or uh, inside or outside of the box, okay? This is sealed onto the suction line in order to get the temperature to open or close the valve so it can meter the refrigerant going through the TXV. All right, as well, you have an external equalization port. And what that's doing is instead of just using the back pressure, like if here's the evaporator coil and you have the liquid refrigerant coming in, you have liquid high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant coming in. Then you have a low pressure, low temperature liquid coming out. It's actually 20% flash gas, 80% liquid. All right, instead of using the back pressure here and then the bulb temperature where it comes out of the evaporator coil at the refrigerant at least. Um, instead of doing that, it takes both the pressure and temperature reading after the refrigerant goes through the evaporator coil to get a better reading in order to hold the correct amount of superheat across the evaporator coil. All right, so you actually have bulb pressure, external equalization pressure, forward pressure, and spring pressure all happening in order to make this TXV work. So if you lose your refrigerant out of this, it's not going to work properly. But if you do have refrigerant in this, you can easily confirm uh, that your TXV is not the problem. They don't go bad very rare, uh, very often, okay? But rarely you'll have them go bad. In fact, I had two go bad in one night doing some service calls. I couldn't believe it. Um, but, uh, you know, more often than not, it's a low charge or the, the some type of air restriction um, but through the process of elimination, 
uh, you can figure out what that is. Okay? All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.